नमस्ते गणेश जी वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन नमस्ते नमस्ते जी नमस्ते गणेश जी नमस्ते आज आप समाप्त को रखेंगे एच वी थ्री का जी तो गणेश जी इज देयर अमंग ऑल ऑफ अस and uh, the uhv3 that we completed and we had started the sharings uh, we have requested ganesh ji to um, be here with us for the next today and for the next two days so that um he can sum up the uhv3 and also if you all have any specific questions then he can address those so um गणेश anybody has any questions regarding the uhv3 content uh you can raise your hand mamta batra ji has raised her hand uh namaste sabhi ko uh actually uh namaste ganesh bhaiya namaste sharmila didi sunil bhaiya everybody actually uh regarding space i want to ask this question actually i uh, thought space is the distance between two units uh matlab dur tak phaila hua aakash mujhe space lagta tha but i was not right i came to know only recently uh could you help me understand what space is how can i understand it what is the process please am i audible yes yes you are audible yeah okay so welcome everybody <laughs> so what i intend to do is uh, to help you uh, to explore into this existential reality you know that we have been talking about starting from units and that to from material unit to consciousness unit and then to the space so if you look at if you look at the space first thing is that we generally don't take note of space our perception is very gross and we are most of the time busy with the gross material world so our effort has been in this whole uh, uh ehv uh, courses is to bring your not bring into your notice that the reality is not only <coughs> the gross material world but even within the gross material world there is there are a subtler and subtler realities so you have <coughs> molecules you have atoms you have some atomic particles and so on then we said that not only there is world of material there is world of consciousness and within this world of consciousness also there are gross activities and there are subtle activities so starting from the gross most activity of selection and testing 
you can go on to higher activities of the self and ultimately up to the realization and as we go up our perception about the reality about the existential reality becomes subtler and subtler so when we are looking at the <coughs> world in a gross manner we are seeing only the physical world or as i said the material reality and then we are also able to get a feel that there are units in this existence material or consciousness gross or subtle but there is on also this space in between the realities in between the units there are units material or consciousness and in between the units there is space so when we start with this idea of units being there and there is this you know distance between these units we see this space as an absence not as a reality but a sense of a reality so there is one unit x and there is one unit y and there is nothing in between x and y right so we think that there is some absence of reality between x and y and that we are calling as gap right or void so we are not perceiving it as a reality to begin with we are perceiving it as an absence of reality as a gap as a void as a vacuum so the first notion of space is absence of reality not the reality by itself so we don't see space as a reality as one of the reality but we see the space as absence of the reality is that clear ji bhaiya ji bhaiya yeah so for most for most of us this notion of a space to begin with is the absence of the units which we consider is the reality whether it is a material unit or a unit of consciousness so that is how we perceive the space but it is still very important because indirectly we are you know appreciating that there is a reality which is absence of units so this is the first step ji so when you are observing at a very gross level at the level of your lower activities of the self that is what we see if you are able to move to higher activities of the self up to the level of contemplation then you start realizing that 
there are two units and there is a gap between these two units right but that is not the only thing these two units are not unrelated ji mm -hmm. there is a relation between this unit x and unit y so the sun is there the earth is there right and there is so much of void in between or distance in between but still if you see there is a relationship between the sun and the earth mm -hmm. so this is one important character of or qualification of the space that this is a reality in which the unit x and unit y are related with each other they are not isolated ji so the sun and the earth however distance far, far they may be but they are related so in that case we can see this space as the basis of the relationship so now space is seen as the basis of relationship जी, is it making sense? जी, जी, जी भैया. Space is not only the absence of reality, but it is a reality, a reality in which two units are related to each other. So it is not an unit, but it is a reality. in which two units are related with each other or this is a reality through which two units are related to each other so space can now be seen as basis of relationship so as long as we were seeing space as a gap or as an absence we thought that it is unimportant but once we are able to see space as the basis of relationship then we start appreciating that this is not you know insignificant unimportant but it is a very important reality because it is through this space of this reality that two units are in relationship with each other ji so even if we are able to see this much start appreciating this space or this reality what we are calling as a space so i think this is one major shift so rather than seeing a space as absence if we start seeing the space as basis of relationship then we will be able to see the importance of space and when we understand the importance of something you know we start paying attention to it till now we did not pay attention to space because we thought that it is not there and therefore it is not important if it is not there and if it is not important there is no point of paying attention to it ji but now we can appreciate space is a reality through which two units are related to each other so it is the basis of relationship between two units and therefore it is important and i must and you know pay attention to it and try understanding it so this is one significant 
So first step is that I'm at least able to see that it is something, even though it is a void or distance or absence. Second stage is that I'm able to see it as a basis of relationship between two units. So though it is not an unit itself, it is a basis of relationship between two units. So this is the second. The third step is that when we grow, you know, uh, further and our level of activity at which we are operating becomes subtler, that is at the level of understanding. We are able to see the self-organization of the units. So we can see that the units are self-organized in space. So every unit is in space. And the units are self-organized in space. So this is an important understanding. And if we can see that units are self-organized in space, and two units, if you see, both of them are self-organized in space, and they are participating in the larger order in and through space. And that is what we are calling as relationship. Mm -hmm. This realization that space is the basis of self-organization, basis of being in order of an unit or any unit. This understanding gives us an indication about the space, the reality which we are calling as a space. So space, so space is not only the basis of relationship, it is also the basis of self-organization, basis of a unit being in order, being in harmony. So now we can see the importance of space further. So that is the second step. That is how we can see the space or the importance of the space. So I feel at least these two uh, or three steps we can uh, uh, go. Number one is seeing the space as a reality, though it is not, which is though not an unit, but it is an absence of two units or distance between two units or what we are calling as void or vacuum or whatever you want to call it. Second step is to see that it is not just the absence, but it is a reality which is not an unit, but which is the basis of relationship. And third is to see that this space is a reality, which is the basis of self-organization, basis of the harmony of the order of an unit, which is in a space. So this we can start working on. Then if you go further, you know, higher in your activity, that is the activity of realization at the level of pure observer. There, it is possible for one to see the lower activities of the self, to see itself as an observer, pure observer. And this pure observer also has the capacity to see the space directly as a reality. So first three steps, we are trying to understand the space 
through three expressions of it, three qualifications of it. But at the level of pure observer, we can pay attention to this space and see the space directly. What we have been doing in exercise one and two is we started paying attention to the self of consciousness. We started paying attention to the activities of the self. And by paying attention to it and by observing, we were able to see the activities. So that capacity is there in the pure observer that we can pay attention to a reality and we can observe the reality and we can see the reality. So that is what we have been doing in exercise one and exercise two. So we can see the self through the activities of the self. First, we can see the lower activities of the self, like imagination, desire, thought, and expectation. Then we can see the subtler activity, the higher activity of the self, which is in the form of assumption, the form of sanskar. And we can certainly see the observer as an activity, the pure observer as an activity. Now, and in exercise two, we also saw that we can see the uh, sensation and we can see the body through sensation and so on. Now we are saying that we can, when we see that this space is an important reality and we have understood something about that reality, then we can start paying attention to the space directly. And your observer, we also see the space. Tend to work on in exercise three. So that is the fourth step that we have to work on. So we are preparing ourselves, developing to higher activities of the self, the activity of your observer. And from there, we intend to work on exercise three to see the space directly as a reality. And once we see the space directly as a reality, and then when we see the units in space, units, you know, submerged in space, all these details we'll try to see in exercise three. So with the background that we have, I thought these three steps seeing the space as an absence or as a distance between two units, seeing the space as the basis of relationship and seeing the space as the basis of self-organization of a unit or of all the units is a good beginning to see that space is a reality. It is an important reality and therefore I need to understand it and I, in order to understand it, I need to pay attention to it. So I think this much we can work on with the, whatever background we have through exercise one and two. It means uh, if I follow exercise one and two, uh, all the time I would be able to see the space. Is yeah, so? in fact, if you, if you look at this, Exercise two, step seven. Gee. If we are aware of ourselves, and if we are aware of our interaction with the body every moment, and then slowly, if we are able to start paying attention in step seven of exercise two, that is when I'm able to see myself being aware every moment, I'm able to see the body as and when I consider important. And when I can see that I am transacting with the body, as and when I decide to, 
then I can start seeing that I am not the body. I am at a distance from the body. Right? And then I can start seeing that this space is a reality in which I am there. Right? It is a reality in which the body is there. See. I am self-organized in a space. The body is self-organized in a space. And there is a relationship between me and the body through a space. I can see that I am transacting information with the body, right? Giving some you know instruction or reading some sensation from the body through space. So this fact that the space is there, I am in space, I am <coughs> this the unit, the space, the body is also in space, and I am transacting information with the body through space. If I can see this as part of the exercise. To step seven, then <clears throat> the process has begun. Gee. To begin with, our focus is on the units, and through units we are seeing the space. Gee. But if you start working and keep working on it, there will be a shift. Shift in the sense that instead of seeing it as a, you know, uh, in reference to the to unit, we can see the space directly. So that shift will take place if we start working on it every moment, as you said, you know, exercise one and two, if we are working every moment and we are going up to step seven. In fact, exercise two, step one and step four is very important. If we keep working on step one and step four of exercise two, where I'm seeing myself, I'm seeing the body. And when I'm reading the sensation, I'm trying to see that you know, I'm not the sensation. I am different from the sensation. I'm at a distance from the sensation. But I can see this distance from between me and the body as a reality. All right? Gee. Even though I'm seeing it as an absence, as a distance, I can see that it is a reality in which I am embedded. Yeah. Then I can see that it is the basis of my relationship with the body. Because through space, I am transacting the information. Gee. And then I can see that I am not dependent on the body. Whether I read the sensation or I don't read the sensation from the body, whether I give instruction to the body or I don't give instruction to the body, I am there and I am, you know, my activities are there. So I am in space and I am, you know, active in space. And this activity is not dependent on the body. So this realization that I am active all the time in continuity in space, whether I am interacting with the body or not interacting with the body. Which may see that I am energized in space. I am energized in space. I can also see that I exist as an unit. In that sense, I am self-organized in space, whether I am interacting with the body or not interacting with the body. Right? 
Right. So I can see two things. I can see that I'm energized in a space. I'm activity in a space, whether I'm interacting with the body or anything else or not. I'm self-organized in space as a unit. And I am transacting information with the body through space. So those three aspects of submergence, I can see. But these details will work out in exercise three, whenever we you know, start working on it. We'll go into those details. Okay. But first three steps, I said we can you know, start working on seeing the space as a distance between two units, seeing the dis space as the basis of relationship between two units, and seeing the space as the basis of self-organization of the unit, or the unit being in order, in harmony. Yes. Ji, Bhaiya, thank you so much. And I am grateful to Sharmila Didi as well for making us uh, memorize all the steps of uh, exercise one and two. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Namaste, Sharmila Didi. Namaste, Ganesh Ji. Namaste, all my co explorers. Uh, I want to know from Ganesh Ji that. Uh, in case of a practitioner of UHV, starting from B2 block to be going to B1 block, right from selecting and testing to realization, there are two ways. One is from, from downward to upward, and the other one is upward to downward. So, uh, uh, with example, uh, I want to know that uh, how to start with hand, we, we reach at our goal. Thank you. Right. <laughs> yes, this is, you know, uh, going through the whole of USB 3. So your question is <laughs> encompassing all that we have discussed in EHV3. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because this is the core question. So if you look at uh, EHV3, it is talking about human conduct. And in order to understand the human conduct, we have to understand the self, the human being, the self, you know, of human being. Then we have to understand the existence, right? And then we understand both the human being and the existence. Then we can understand the role of human being in this existence, and that is human conduct. And only when we understand the whole of existence and the human being embedded in it, we are able to understand the human conduct. And in order to understand all this, we have to understand the self. And we have to understand the high you know, activities of the self. So starting from the lowest activity of the self, we have to understand the highest activity of the self. So we have to understand how we move from the lowest activity of the self to the highest activity of the self. And if we are awakened to the highest activity of the self, then how does it uh, uh, inspires or guides the lower activities of the self? And if that happens, if the highest activity of the self, if we are awakened to the highest activity of the self, and it is guiding the lower activities of the self, right? And if it is all self-organized, then our expression outside, our behavior, our work, our participation in the larger order 
will all get self organized and that is what is human conduct right yes and this is the content of hb3 so in order to your question i have to go through the whole of hb3 right sir yeah but i'll just get a you know give a feel of uh, all this because you are have already gone through this uh, whole content and you have been going through exercise 2 i'll briefly try to uh, you know uh, explain the major shifts right if we look at this diagram uh, who is operating this slide sunil ji are you operating this slide yeah okay there is one uh, uh, uh uh ppt which uh, uh one slide which uh, gives this direction upward and downward both do we have that slide ji i will i'll i'll put it that but i'll begin with this so if you look at ourselves and our conduct in the world outside our major focus is on the other so this three level self body and the other our major focus is the other yeah. it may be other human being it may be physical facility right the material world but our major focus is the other and that is where we are busy can you see that yes sir yes so the first step is to shift from looking at or paying attention just to the outer world or the other we start paying attention to ourselves so we start paying attention to the body and we pay, start paying attention to the self so this is the first shift yes <clears throat> okay yes now when we are paying attention to the self the self is not just the lowest activity of selecting and testing right so there are other activities which are higher than the selecting and testing with the world outside right so first shifting from the world outside shifting from the other to the body and shifting from the body to the self that is what is first step i would say so pay, you know paying attention to the self considering that it is important sir can you repeat the this one once again no i said if you look at our life today we are most of the time paying attention to the other yeah this is where we are for us the other human beings are important the material world the physical facility outside are important yes sir and we are busy trying to get some favorable condition with this you know world outside right yes so the first step is to realize that the other is important that is the other human being is important the physical world is important but i am also important 
So when you say I am important, you start with saying that body and the self both. But when you start paying attention, you can see that self and body are also two units, different units. And you are the self and not the body. You are certainly in coexistence with the body and you are transacting with the body. So you are not only the body, you are the self. So first step is to see that the world outside is important. You know, this other is important, but you are also important. Then it is important to see that you are the self transacting with the body. Right? So you are not the body, but mm -hmm. you are in relationship with the body and you are transacting with the body. So this is second step. Third step is that within the self, now I have to go, you know, subtler and subtler, start paying attention to the subtler and subtler activities of the self. Uh, can we go uh, to, to the slide before this, uh, Sunilji? This is coming down from the top. We need a slide which is going up. I mean, all this has been discussed. I'm just repeating in response to the question that you have asked. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So I'm saying that from the other, we have to start paying attention to the body also. From the body, we have to start paying attention to the self. And when we are paying attention to the self, what we did in exercise one is that instead of paying attention just to selecting and testing, right? Part of it, we started paying attention to the imagination as a whole, which includes this desire, thought, and expectation. And in terms of activity, if you see, we started paying attention to this imaging, analyzing, comparing, selecting, and testing, right? So this working on exercise one, that is seeing the self by the self, we have already completed first two steps. That is paying attention to the other, paying attention to the body, and now paying attention to the self. Yeah. Right? So the step of Seeing that other is important, but the body is also important. Then seeing that the body is important and self is also important. And therefore, I have to understand the self. So when you start working on exercise one, that is paying attention to the self by the self, we have already completed these two steps. Now within the self, we are paying attention to the imagination. So we have moved to these three activities of the self. At the level of selecting and testing, at the level of analyzing and comparing, at the, the level of imaging. We can also see that this imaging or the desire or the feeling which, you know, is uh, in the form of desire is guiding the thought and the expectation. Can we see that? Yes. Sir. Yeah. So this desire, which is guiding the thought and the expectation, and therefore the behavior, this is certainly higher than the thought and the expectation. Yes. So if we start working on exercise one, step one, two, and three, we can see that these three levels of activities are there, the expectation, the thought, the desire, and it is desire which is guiding the thought, which is guiding the expectation, and this is guiding the behavior and work. Yes. Then when we are working on step four and five, we are basically moving up still to the higher activities. 
right the activity of this contemplation is activity of understanding right because that is where we have our sanskar our assumption about the reality so two basic assumptions about the reality one is the self organization of the unit and participation of the unit in the larger order so we are moving to this understanding level of understanding or absence of it so when we are observing that our feelings are decided by our assumption or our acceptance about the reality whether it is based on right understanding or not based on right understanding we are essentially trying to move to the higher activity of the self higher than the activity of desire and when we are operating at the level of pure observer we are moving to the activity of realization and we can see that this at the level of pure observer right, there is no kind of lack of clarity when we start observing at the level of when we start working at the level of pure observer we can see to begin with what is natural for us what is not natural for us what is naturally acceptable what is not naturally acceptable so our assumption may be wrong our sanskar may be wrong but when we look at it from the place of pure observer then we can see what is right and what is not right what is naturally acceptable what is not naturally acceptable what is natural for me what is not natural for me so this is how step wise we are moving up to the higher activities of the self yes can you get some hint of what yes. i am saying definitely definitely yeah so exercise one is basically trying to help you move or at least see the activities of the self and move from lower activity of the self to the higher activity of the self so when we are saying in step 6 that let us ask ourselves what is naturally acceptable to us the feeling of relationship or opposition feeling of harmony or disharmony feeling of coexistence or struggle we are essentially trying to operate this pure observer from there we are trying to see and then in step 7 we are saying that if we are able to see that it is the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence at the level of pure observer then this can be the guide for the lower activities of the self so this can be the guide for my sanskar for my acceptance this can be guide for my feeling for my thought my expectation so this basically step 7 is trying to guide the lower activities of the self from the highest activity of the self the activity of the pure observer where i am able to see that it is the relationship harmony and coexistence which is naturally acceptable and in that step 7 b or 6 b and 7 b we are trying to see the relationship harmony and coexistence as the basic reality of existence through pure observer right 
So in 6b, we are trying to see these basic realities from the pure observer. And in 7b, there is a natural guidance of this pure observer of the higher activities, you know, uh, to the lower activities of the self. So if you look at this uh, diagram that is displayed here, this is the, the realization of relationship, harmony and coexistence at the level of pure observer, which is guiding the understanding, the contemplation, the comparing, the testing, and ultimately the guiding the behavior at the level of body. Yeah. So we are trying to work out something, you know, uh, through exercise one at the level of self to start from the lower activities of the self, going to the higher activities of the self, up to the pure observer, the activity of realization, and then coming down to the lowest activity of the self. But this is just a beginning, I would say. If we keep working on it, then, as we said, we'll try to work in depth, you know, in exercise three. But we are preparing ourselves for that. Yes. This is all coming down from top. We have a slide which is going up from the bottom. But it is fine. I think I've just given some clues for it. And this exercise one is a very good beginning. To go from bottom to the top of the activities of the self. And then coming down from the top. Yes. In fact, if you do this exercise and come back to the step one of exercise one, you can see that what it means is that you are aware of the imagination of the self. And this being aware is being at the level of pure observer. So from there, you are observing your imagination, your desire, thought, and expectation. You are evaluating your desire, whether it is naturally acceptable, not actually acceptable. Right? And just by doing that, right, you can see whether this desire is natural, whether it is leading to happiness or unhappiness. And just this observation will lead to purification of your desire. You don't have to do anything to purify it. So you are at this you know, level of pure observer. You are observing the desire, the imagination. Right? And then you are evaluating this desire whether it is naturally acceptable, not naturally acceptable. And if you just do that, then your desires will be purified. Mm. And only when you are at the level of your observer, you will not react. You will only respond. Respond in terms of observing the imagination, observing the desire, and evaluating the desire. If you go come down from the state of pure observer, then you will start. You might start reacting. So this exercise one is a very strong, you know, uh, thing. You are observing, right? And you are observing without reaction. So when you say you are being aware, that means you are at the level of pure observer. 
examination that means you are from the pure observers you are observing this activities of b2 and there in particular observing the desire the feeling and from pure observer you are trying to evaluate this feeling whether it is naturally acceptable or not naturally acceptable so you are doing that from the state of pure observer and only when you are at the level of pure observer you will not react so when we are saying don't react right? just observe just be aware we are saying be at the level of pure observer observe this desire thought and expectation evaluate this desire and that's it no reaction observation and evaluation will lead to purification because i am holding on to some desire because i think that it is important if i can see that it is not what it is not natural for me it will not lead to happiness for me then it will automatically drop down and this must be happening isn't it yes. so last three months yes, you are working on it could you see this that at least some of these desires which were there which you could see and evaluate they have just dropped down yes sir yes so this is interesting you know we have the uh, potential in the self to pay attention to ourselves see the activities of the self we have the potential to work on ourselves see the lowest activity of the self the higher activities of the self move from the lower activity to the higher activity right go up to the highest activity then evaluate all the lower activities of the self from there and guide them properly set them in order yes <clears throat> yeah so this is a brief account you know i have given just to draw your attention towards this possibility sir very nice sir very nice okay couple more hands are raised kanish ji but uh, time is up now it's time for the okay. hindi session so we'll have to take more questions tomorrow then